Welcome back to another RPG Maker Unite tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to add an actual Unity scene to your game. So with that said, let's get started. Alright, so here we are on the Epic Game Store Hub. And if you've never had to upgrade your project before, it's really simple. You can see that there's a 1.2.1 out, and this one's still at 1.2.0. So if you right-click this and click Upgrade the Project, you can then be taken to the disclaimer, meaning that, you know, this version could break your game. So back up. You can check that box, and you can run the update. When you run the update, it will update your project real quick, and then you can go ahead and open it in that new update. So I'll be back when this opens. All right, so here we are in the tutorial project. We're going to go to this forest town right here. I'm going to put the player right here to start. And what we're going to do is click on this crystal ball. And when we click on this crystal ball, this is where we're going to start the actual game. The Unity scene, I should say. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, the first thing we need is we need to either create the Unity scene or another way that you can do it is by downloading a template Unity scene or something like that to get you started. So one way you can do that is you can go to the, uh, let's go to the Unity Asset Store here. And um, then let's just click on in there. And then you can click on Templates. And I just went down to Free Templates. And then I went to right here and I grabbed this little space goer thing. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this game inside Unite and then play this game as kind of like a mini game, if you can think about it like that. So the first thing we need to do is go back to our game here and we need to go to the the uh, Unity editor. Okay, it's gonna switch over just like this. Then we're gonna go to the package manager. And once you install it from here basically, so you'd click on here and then you would say add to my assets basically. And then once you do that, then in the Unity editor it will appear right in here. You can just type plain, because that's what it's called. And then there it is right there. Now you'll have to download it at first if you haven't, but then the next thing that you can do is import it, all right? So when we import it, it's gonna say that, hey, this is gonna change your project settings. And we don't wanna do that because Unite has very specific project settings that need to be done. So what we're gonna do is click this switch project here, and it's gonna put it into a temp project. And so once this pops up here, then we'll be able to continue. All right, so that finally loaded. Unity just takes generally a long time to load an initial project. It's, it's not a Unite specific thing. So now we can see here that we have a assets folder and then we have the plain runner thing. Now this is storing in a temp project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the assets here and I'm gonna click on show in Explorer. And so here we can double click into here and we have the plain runner stuff, which has all the stuff that we need. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go to another folder here where my Unite project is. And we're going to go to this tutorial here. And I'm just going to go to Assets. And I'm just going to put it in this base asset folder. I'm not going to put it in RPG Maker or anything. And I'm going to click Paste. All right. So now what I can do is I can actually close this one. And we can say forget it because it's a temp project right now. It's stored in a temp directory. If you see, it's in a temp local directory here. And then I'm so I'm just going to click on forget. And the other project is now loading it in. So that's why it's doing that little bit of thing. You can see it right here it just popped up. I can cancel out of here. Now the only other thing to do is we have to add the unity scene to the list of call scenes that we can do in RPG Maker Unite. I'll just say it like that. And basically we're just going to go down to scenes here and it's level one. We're going to open it up right here. And I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm not the best Unity navigator. But what we need to do is we need to go to File and go to Build Settings. And then we need to add any open scene. So since we've opened Level 1, since that's the one that we're doing, it will now add that to the scenes in the build. And now we will be able to call this Level 1 from the RPG Maker event. So with all of that done, we can get out of here and go back to the RPG Maker Focus Mode. And once we're here, we can go to the forest town here. We can click on that orb that we were talking about earlier, and I can add a new event. We're gonna go to the last page and say call Unity Scene. And then the Unity Scene that we're gonna call is Level. 
we can click to unload the map scene. Now, if you do click this option, everything will reset as if you are coming back to the scene anew when you come back, or you can keep it going in the background. So if you have already done some things that for data wise that you need, you might keep it loaded. Um, if you don't need it, then you can just reset it when you load back in from the Unity scene. Basically, you're gonna call the Unity scene, and then whenever a scene kind of change is played at all on the Unity scene, it's gonna come back to the RPG Maker Unite scene. Now, the cool thing is, is you can pass a variable, so you can say, hey, I want some values passed from, from here, and then I want to be able to grab a value when I come back. So there is that option. I'll show you how to do this um, from the manual. I'm not gonna show you how to do this in the game here. And so now with all of that said, we can literally test it right now. So we can go to play test and we can click on the orb and it's going to take us into that unity scene. Now when we, we can, you know, it's kind of fun actually. And then when we crash right here, we have this, the exit, it's an application quit. It doesn't really work in unity, but this restart, what this normally does is it actually restarts the scene. But because it's a scene manager call of any kind, it's actually going to take us right back to the RPG Maker Unite scene. So just keep that in mind. And what I mean by that is if we go back to the Unity editor and we go to the script, and I believe it was one of these, the lose UI maybe. Yeah, so if the button is pressed right here for the restart, then it's going to load the scene. And just that loading a scene, even though it's loading the same scene, I'm not sure if there's a restart scene that might work with Unity. I'm just not too familiar with their calls. But even calling this load scene of the same level will trigger the boot out back out to Unite. And so, yeah, just keep that in mind. If it's a mini game that you can restart or something like that, you're going to have to reset the scene differently. All right. So the last thing that I want to go over, because that's basically all there is to calling a scene, a Unity scene. It's actually really simple. The last thing I want to go over is that in their manual, they have more examples. So if you wanted to get access to the variable from a script, because the variable that you send from the scene, which was the one that you have the option in the event call, this one right here, you have to grab it and set it through script now. And so this is kind of how you have to do it. So the, the key things that you need is you need to have the using the RPG Maker code base thing right here up at the top. And then you're going to use this to, I think it's, yeah, get the variable. And then you're going to use this to return that value to the variable in Unite, right? So they just have this right here, which is pretty simple to understand. The other thing that they said is that if you want the Unity scene to persist in the background, then you need to put them on a don't destroy on load object. I am not sure about that, but I'm sure there's plenty of Unity tutorials on what those are. Yeah, so you basically can keep objects going on in the background of your Unite scene, of your Unite game, I mean. But it does recommend to set those objects at least to false when you're not in the actual unity scene. So yeah, take that for what it is. There is this documentation right here. It also comes with a sample project if you want to test it right here. So you can download that and then go through the processes as well. So anyway, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comment below. We'll get you figured out. And with that said, we'll see you at the next video.